This is a well-known dish in the region of Brittany in France, but not commonly seen elsewhere. I have changed a few things to make it more modern and elegant than the original. The thing you need to know most is that this dish depends on Loic Raison cider. This is nothing like what is called apple cider in the U.S., which is simply unfiltered apple juice. Loic Raison is fermented and more like an apple champagne. Loic Raison is exported and it's available in most other countries, but you'll probably have to ask around in order to find it. Sometimes you can get boneless, skinless chicken thighs, but uh, boneless, skin-on chicken thighs are pretty hard to find, so you usually have to make them yourself. So, <clears throat> just have to bone them out. Chicken thighs aren't very difficult to bone out. They're, they're very difficult to do perfectly neatly, but they're not difficult to do. So, there's, there's basically bones that run like this, and the best way to do it, I find, is first just use your fingers and just gouge down and force your way in until you can find that first big bone there and free the meat from that then you get a place to work the knife and begin peeling it back from that point and of course when you're working the knife you can also still use your fingers Got one end free. And then and work the meat off of around the joint here and use the knife to assist you. Going a little bit slower than I usually do in order to show you. And then you find the end of the joint, which isn't it's different depending on a little bit depending on what kind of butchery they did before you get to it. Uh, you got a little has a little knob here. In this case, it uh, didn't come free. It's part of the the joint. <coughs> and just take a knife, work this out. Bring your fingers around. Make sure you didn't get anything else. And of course the skin got disrupted a little bit, but you can just smooth that back down. Okay. Yeah. It's not gonna be perfectly clean, but this is this is a pretty good piece. And you repeat that for all the other pieces too. And mix a tablespoon of dark brown sugar. Uh, dollop of uh, Dijon mustard. In this case I'm using an herb Dijon mustard from France, but you don't have to do that. A um, little lemon juice, maybe about a tablespoon. And it's best to mix this up a little bit first. Don't worry about the sugar dissolving, it won't make any difference. And then uh, a little vegetable oil, and a tablespoon or so of vegetable oil. We have the uh, boneless chicken thighs. I'm going to put them so that the, uh, the meat side is down in this, but not really trying to get any of this onto the skin. Yeah, if a little bit gets on the skin, it's not going to ruin it or anything. But uh, you mostly want to get the meat side. We're going to leave the the other side. We're going to put flour on in just a moment here. And you can refrigerate it like this and, and use it like a marinade. But really, it won't make much difference. <laughs> the time this is cooked, the, this, uh, these flavors will penetrate anyway. So now, we're going to get our flour ready. So I just moved the chicken thighs off to the board. You can see that they took virtually everything that was in the bowl with them that stuck to the bottom side of the meat. And now I'm going to sprinkle some flour on this. You can you can use a sifter and if you don't have one of these uh, shakers that, that has a screen built in, you can just put some through a sifter. And uh, now this is, this is ready to begin browning. When the pan is hot, I'm going to add enough oil to coat it and then actually going to discard part of the oil. 
So there was enough to coat the surface and I'm discarding the rest. Now I'm putting the chicken in, floured side down of course. And now that we're past this stage, I'm going to add a little bit of salt to the back side. The front is going to get salt later. Now we're going to continue cooking these on the uh, in Celsius, about 200 degrees is the surface temperature of the pan. I've got it on the heat of just under 7 or more than 10 on the stove. And obviously we want to get a nice crisp brown skin. The, um, the thing is, this is this uh, sort of marinade that you put on the other side. Because of the heat of this, this is penetrating into the chicken much more quickly. So this is why you really don't need to leave it sit in that marinade for a while. Because during the cooking process on this side, it's, it's going to pretty much do all the marinade it would have done anyway at this temperature. I've just now flipped the chicken. This is actually normal. You might think this is burnt around the edges. It's not. This is actually the way we want it. It's got a slight, what you might mistake as, as the scent of something burning. It's not. When you're done with this, this is going to be beautiful. Don't let this worry you. But don't let it go beyond this point. This is nicely, deeply, deeply caramelized, but it's not actually black and burnt. This is the stage you're looking for. You're going to have to, you know, you keep picking it up to check it. So uh, now I just flipped over the chicken, and I'm only going to leave it sit on this side with the, with the sugar and spices for about one minute, and then I'm going to move it off to a plate. Now, there's fat in here, obviously from the chicken, a little bit of the vegetable oil, but mostly chicken fat. How much of this you pour off is up to you. Do not pour it all off, or you will not be able to, to perform the next step. You can get rid of a little bit of it. Okay, while the pan is cooling down off the heat, I'm preparing the carrots. You, you can just leave them like this if you want. And then you can take it to the next step by doing a, <laughs> the, the lazy approach to the turned carrot, which is just to take a paring knife and work your way around the corner of the edges and, and peel it off a little bit. This is, this is an approximation, a, an easy approximation of a classic French technique. This, this is fine. This will still be impressive enough for your guests. It'll look nice. And it won't take, make you take uh, an extra 20 minutes in the kitchen going through carrots and trying to peel them perfectly. You get, you get shapes like this. This is, this is good. Now that the pan has cooled back down again, now we're going to heat it a second time with those uh, carrots in there. And I've got four shallots. Uh, I left the root end on when I peeled these. Uh, this will help hold them together better. And we can and you start to hear some sizzling. Uh, vegetables have already picked up some of that fond from the where the chicken had been browned. Now I'm going to add a ladle of uh, good chicken stock to this. And cook these in a little bit more. The fond will help. <coughs> I mean, the, the stock will help pick up the rest of the fond. And we'll get these things. As the stock and the fond reduce, the vegetables will get some color on them. Don't try to do this at too high a heat, or you'll just burn everything, of course. When it gets pretty close to being dry, you can add another ladle, uh, another 60 mils of soaps, chicken stock, and you repeat the process again. You want to get these well colored, well seasoned otherwise. And after a few minutes, you, you'll reduce this down to a glaze again. Now what we're going to do, we're going to pile these vegetables into the center of the pan. Then our chicken pieces from earlier are going to go around the edges. We've got the juices that ran off of the chicken. Put those in there. Along with that, um, this is the, the cider. And a couple of sprigs of fresh marjoram over the top of this. Now you're going to put a lid on this. Reduce the heat way down to where it's just a simmer. 
and let it sit like this for uh, about 45 minutes. I'm reducing the heat down to 2. On 1 to 10 it's on a 2, so it's a very low heat. Then after 45 minutes of braising time, I'm going to remove the herbs and discard them. Lift off the vegetables and the chicken to a platter. Piece at a time. In case you feel tempted to add the cream directly to the pan, I am going to show you here why never to do that. It will curdle. Don't do this. Once it curdles, it's almost impossible to fix. That's it. Put this over here. Off the heat. with the thing. And then return it to the heat gently. Gently. Don't bring it to a, a rolling boil or you'll have to have separation. Heat it enough to reduce it until it's thick. Then pour the sauce off. You can either keep this in a thermos bottle or on a uh, water bath, or you can uh, put it in the refrigerator and reheat it in a microwave later. Uh, you also need to pick off some margarine leaves for the plating. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.